you want to uh, go ahead and go into yeah, this right yeah, now? Let's Peace. get into it. What Fucking up? hell yeah. Uh, Secret House, man. Last episode of the year. We're recording this on New Year's Eve for y'all. Happy New Year. Right before we go out, just going to do some DJing tonight. I'm going to go rock with some DJ Tag and a lot of my other people. Uh, we First and foremost, you guys know us, Tokyo Bass Hip Hop Art and Culture Conversations. Um, I want to say thank you to all of our supporters, the comments, the the people who hit the like button, the subscribers, the Patreons, people Everyone who are in the, down in the Discord. In the Discord. Um, this year has actually been the year where I started to feel like we're really starting to emerge. The first two years we had a hard time putting together episodes and getting together all the time. This year we've managed to record, I think, around 76, 77. Um, album reviews and that's not even counting some of the other content that we've done and the collaborations that we've done with other people and man uh, shout out to y'all because the reason we're doing this is not to be successful so to have we're, we're not trying to be like a you know a million followers at 200 or get a bunch of money from the patreon we we started this because we wanted to talk about hip-hop culture and introduce people to it and also uh communicate with like minds and to see those type of people constantly rocking with us like we barely ever get any bozos in the comments they save that shit for other channels i guess but man thank y'all thank y'all like I, do so i have much. a oh, wait, i might have a do i have an applause oh wait wait Woo. Yeah, bye, 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 bye. i used to use this a lot more often when i was podcasting and we still got we still got two rev we've got the the uh the knots blue a review that I haven't edited and dropped yet, and also the uh, the Sano interview, the legendary graph uh, street style writer Sano. Um, so yeah, uh, today, as the title suggests, we are going to discuss our ten favorite albums of the year. You can go ahead and think of this as our the ten best albums of the year, if you want. Um, we don't think of it that the way. ten favorite hip hop albums of the year because That's we're right. going to do a ten favorite non hip hop albums of the year video later some point early next year right yeah that's right um, we'll, we'll have our friend jamil from sonic right. club the sonic club on that, one. that should be a lot of fun um that should be very dope we actually we were trying to get l spade on but i kind of did you, you talk to him did we? i did briefly talk to him um obviously he's very busy everything yeah. going on in the u.s right now um i told him to send us his list anyway like maybe you'll see it down in the description below um because oh he I, said he couldn't do it because he wasn't responding it was just timing like I, okay. I had a brief chat with him like we mostly just caught up because i haven't spoken to him in a little while but um you know he said go ahead like it would just go ahead and do it without me for now um okay but i was like yeah give us your list anyway and like we can stick it in the description sure just comment on it spade we yeah. miss you man I miss you bro um okay yeah so before we get started let's explain to people how we put together our list just in case they didn't watch the other one and also mine is kind of different why don't uh, you explain how you put together your list so i just pulled together like maybe my favorite 35 odd albums i was like oh, all of these could be in the top 10 15 20 you know if i don't think about it too analytically uh, pulled it all together mm. uh found a website which ranked everything mm -hmm. you just dumped it all into a pool it gave you like 2v2 elimination style which do you prefer which do you prefer mm -hmm. and then you pick the one you like more spits out a list of all of these albums in the order you put them uh, and then I kind of just cheated and went through them and I was like, oh, I feel like this should be above this or I think they should be below this. And um, I also kind of tr tried to take into consideration uh, for the other video that we did, our 11th favorite albums of the year, which was things that didn't quite make the top 10, which for me is probably going to be a more, is probably a more interesting list than this one that I'm going to give you today, because there's going to be some stuff you expect to see in a top 10 hip hop albums of the year list. Yeah, I think people that know us are going to be like, well, yeah, of course they have that. But word. mine was a really convoluted and long process. I had a hard mm. time getting my shit together this year. Um, I ran it through Ranker. I looked at my Spotify plays. I looked at the list that I had been making over the year and where I kind of assigned star ratings to albums as I as we review them and in terms of like how much I went back to them and things like that. At the end of the day, I I decided to think about like why i like these albums and how they kind of compare to the other albums that i find are similar to them and um it turns out a lot of the albums i went back to were like because of certain songs and not necessarily in terms of the entire project right and yeah i like I would, I find myself like, oh, I like this album a lot because it's interesting, the musicality. I also like this album because of the musicality. So what I started to do is just kind of like make groupings of albums and be like, this is my two MC yep. album spot. 
and how does the hair stack up to this or how does uh, arm and hammer or scaring the host stack up to this and so basically my mine is almost like subcategories for three through ten yeah. and then the first two are just the undeniable favorites that i absolutely knew would be in those first two places so i might kind of hint at the other albums that push that were pushed out by my list as i go down on it but it's also kind of so convoluted that it's not exactly that either so we'll get into it you guys we, we've also got quite a lot of crossover on our lists i mm. assume um so i guess we haven't uh, are we gonna just you want to just go through them let's do let's do or? it like we did the other year the like the first year maybe where just go through your list we'll talk about it explain the album explain why you picked it and then and then i'll jump in and you know and then you do yours i'll do mine like that type of thing okay is that cool sounds that, that sounds better than here's our tens because right, that way right. that way i you know you just it's read straight through all over yeah, the place. yeah i sure, sure i don't know um, yeah so let me know if it's on your list and then maybe we can talk about it after right okay yeah yeah uh so should we just go straight into it yes let's do that all right oh, so oh yeah, let's yeah, cut yeah, the beats yeah, off yeah. then uh so uh number 10 arm and hammer we buy diabetic test trips um i think it was inevitable that this was going to be on one of our lists yeah. right um Oh, yeah. Yours just outside the top ten. It was yeah. on our on our previous on video, um, and uh, yeah, I I think this is a really incredible album. I think it's possibly the most kind of. I mean, uh, Haram is obviously also like incredible, but I, I think um, this is this is the album where people should really be jumping onto this project as something special okay. and, and, yeah. and new. The nature of of the production and the vocals, the subject matters, uh, the features on here. Yeah. This is like a real celebration of what has made Backwards and um, Billy Woods and Elucid so special over oh, the yeah. last decade or so um, and the run that they've been on. Uh, all of the features on here feel so at home. Um, it feels like you're at like a family reunion of a bunch of ill people, some of whom you might not know, but I don't know. It, it, yeah. It's it's a coming home moment for me. This album. When I hear it, you know, it's not on my list. So when I hear this, like, it's so good. It's like a full whole project that I kind of was kicking myself a little bit for not putting on my list. But what I found is that I just didn't go back to it as much. Listening to it right now, I'm like, yeah, this is obviously one of the top five albums of the year in terms of just the execution the quality of the work the variety the space it finds it in and also speaks to me uh my political sensibilities my type of blackness and and just what i think is dope about hip-hop this is one of the if i was doing an objective list and not my favorite list clearly for me i feel like towards objectivity this list this is comfy top five, top five yeah comfy top and that, five that, that's me. true yeah. for this list as well i think this is better than probably seven of the albums if I'm trying to be objective, yeah. quote unquote, whatever that means. Um, Word. But I'm not an objective person, so it lands at number 10 for me. Yeah. Um, moving on to number nine. This one, we've both kind of cheated when it comes to this next record, oh, I yes. believe. Um, oh, yeah. Scaring the Hose, Danny the Danny Brown, JPEG Mafia. Danny the Brown. Danny the Brown. <laughs> yeah. Scaring the yeah. Hose, JPEG yeah. the Mafia. Yeah. Um, and I've included the DLC. In oh, that this makes one. sense. That's um, that's fine and fair to because, me. Because like when you talk about video game, you generally include the DLC yeah. as uh, that. That makes product, that right? actually makes a lot so more sense. Yeah. I I'm tacking yeah. the DLC onto there because like, guess what, bitch, we back ho, uh, and um, uh, some of the other joints on that EP I think mm. are easily worthy of being on this record, and I think they are amazing as well. This, uh, this so, album yeah. is uh, one of the best albums of the year, too, I would say. Like, I kind of put this in the top five if I'm judging just upon, like, the quality of it. Even with the the problems with the uh, the mastering of it, so to speak, that people have complained about. This album just, at the end of the... For me, there's three songs that I absolutely love on this album. And this is mm. probably the, the number one song that I love on it. But... I just it some of the other songs they started to kind of get away from me and I chose another album for different reasons but this I mean Danny is like this is maybe Danny's verse on this as when he comes in next is like one of my favorite verses of the year it's not super lyrical it's not super wordy uh, the album the, isn't super lyrical the, or wordy but 
the way he drops in on the beat, the energy, the production, just the kind of unique quirkiness of it, of these two incredible like personalities, fucking amazing. Uh, first Wait, kind of, yeah, uh, before I, I, I want to hear that Danny. For Word, word. Uh, I'm sorry. I we, had to take that break will, because I love that. We don't yeah. intend to make any money off oh, this video. Not anyway, monetized. Our channel is not monetized. Yeah, We're going to get monetized. copyright claimed. Yeah. Whatever. Fight we already it. are. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, this one is amazing. Amazing, amazing. My my number eight is probably my first like wild card pick um, mm. of, of the bunch. Mary Sue oh, yeah. and Psychedelic Ensemble. Cacophonous Digressions, A Record of a Moment in Time. Um, Singapore's Mary Sue... The UK's psychedelic ensemble. This was not a, a record, a project. And I was not familiar with any of these people. I knew nothing about any of this. Uh, you were like, hey, let's review it. And I saw like the cool looking like Mickey Mouse type mm -hmm. cover. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, sure, whatever. This album's fucking ill. Yeah, yeah. This album's so fucking ill. It's, it doesn't sound like anything else. It has this very strange and wonderful way of like, falls into these weird grooves that are like unsteady yeah. and unstable. It's like, Watching an atom that is blinkering in and out of existence uh, and going to explode with the force of a nuclear bomb. It's, it's yeah. just something quite special and I'd never heard and anything like it before. On top of that, there's also like a... There, there's an accessibility to it, I think, that um, like the album that pushed this out of my list doesn't have the same type of accessibility. Like these raps sound like fucking raps. Like if you like... If you like old Griselda, if you like Rock Marcy, if you like ST Knack or Al Davino or Ka, like it's like, those are a lot of artists, right? But this is kind of like towards that, just like, here goes some fucking raps off some awkward, odd beats. And it, it's dope for that reason too. This album is really good. This one's really yeah. ill. It's definitely mm. one you got to check out if you're not familiar with it. Um, moving on, my, my number seven, uh, this is one we both have, I think, Fatboy Sharif. Decay. I cheated. Okay, <laughs> you cheated. Yeah. All right. Cheated. Well, this is on your list, right? Yeah, so yeah. Um, we'll we'll move on to we'll yeah. talk about the Fat Boy Sharif yeah. shortly. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I mean, shouts out to Fat Boy Sharif. Much yeah. appreciation to him. He sent us this record in advance, gave us some time yeah. to sit on it, really, really think yeah. about it. Um, and I still don't really get this record. I love it. I, I really do love this album. Uh, and there's so many themes and ideas and images that are, are absolutely wonderful to me. Uh, I'm still not sure I get it, and yeah, I'm sure we have a bit yeah. more to say about this. Yeah. It, it is on it is on my list, so uh, we'll we'll do that. We'll we'll get into a larger discussion about it during my uh, my countdown. Number six is another one I know is going to be on your list: Billy Woods and Kenny Siegel Maps. Um, this was my favorite of the backwoods and backwoods yeah. adjacent things that came out this year. I think this is just a really complete and fucking dope record. Yeah. Um, the production on here, Kenny Siegel has had one of the best runs of the year. And, His year was incredible. You know, and in yeah. a year where so many producers had really, really good years. Um, I've got two two of his albums on my list. On your, this one, and this is on the sharp yeah, end of the list yeah, as well, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. This album is incredible, and I kind of feel like this is one of the more accessible Billy Woods albums for people who want to step into Woods. I, I think in our review, I wasn't very happy with the review because I feel like I didn't get my thoughts off um, as, as succinctly as I would have liked to, but I feel like there's an accessibility here that is is largely in part by the way that Kenny Woods crafts his beats. Like, they're Kenny very... Woods. Kenny Woods, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Ken Wood, um, Danny the Brown, yeah. Uh, the way that he, Kenny Siegel crafts his beats, like he's just so hip hop, but the musicality that he uses kind of elevates it to another level. And I, I, I don't know. When I think of when I think of Kenny Siegel, I just almost want him to produce solo albums for every single artist that I love because he's just capable of shaping the sound into something else. And when you have Woods, and this is not like. I feel like this is not like super serious woods either or super no. kind of uh, aggressive, transgressive, political woods in, in a lot of ways. Like some of these tracks are just like, yeah, I'm not going to be at Soundcheck. And other, other joints, he's just styling like, it's time for me to rap dope right now because I'm rapping with Aesop Rock. And here goes one of the best verses of the year. I might say some Congolese consigliere bars for you. And this is just... I've seen a few outlets put this in the top five, even albums, even outlets that are not like all hip hop, 
it'll be like you know your pitchforks or whatever i'm pretty sure this is like top 10 for pitchfork and and if i had it my way top three album of the year absolutely towards objectivity which i you know my materialist interpretation of that is it doesn't get much better than this so entering my top five i've got a couple wild cards my number five nappy nina morning dew um, shout out to you this album is kind of unique and brilliant mm. Uh, and this is an artist who I heard features of but was not personally familiar with um, and I'm very deeply grateful that you put me onto this I, I think Another like thought, me melodically this is my favorite album of the year like the way this album sounds compositionally yeah. is just beautiful like it's oh, a really man. really stunning record um, I love that like the chords and just the way that some of these songs are assembled are, are absolutely spectacular um this is definitely an artist that i think some of our listeners might not be familiar yeah. with i don't think the review got like a huge amount of traffic but um most of our videos don't most but of yeah, our videos yeah, don't yeah. Ah, we've yeah. got a thousand but subscribers like whatever yeah, yeah. but um you know i, I think but no you're, you're right the reception was a little subdued with this i was expecting to see more people being like wow i wasn't aware but i'm glad that i am now and uh that's how i kind of felt about it because I, this was essentially like my first introduction to uh, to Nappy Nina. Um, and yeah, I mean, this I, I picked this track, Stone Soup, with More Mother, uh, probably one of my favorite tracks of the year. Um, but there's something to be said for just oh, the yeah. presence of artists like More Mother and, and Cavalier and, yeah. you know, Messiah on him, RV Stars, the boss of the, the Satisfaction, formerly, um, that present just these different facets of yeah. you know idiosyncratic blackness afrofuturist yeah. uh -huh. and then occasionally like deeply spiritual deep and feminine energy a feminine energy too. and yeah. yeah this album really is a, a yeah. complete diet it's a balanced yeah. meal and you know um, a lot of times when you use those type of like uh, qualifiers or adjectives to describe things in the broader space of music or culture a lot of those things read really hollow to me but i i, I and sometimes you might hear me kind of shit on certain types of identity like identitarian politics, politics or intersectional uh politics but my problem is not with identity politics identity politics is a class politics the issue is the symbiotic relationship with identity politics and neoliberalism that i have an issue with and this album is devoid of a lot of the larger issues that just make me be like okay great you i'm happy you're a woman or i'm happy that you're fat and left-handed like congratulations <laughs> but this this album and it doesn't even point at those things to get you to notice them it just is that because that is who nappy nina is wonderful wonderful incredible album that's a that's a, a really really strong pick number four uh, another kind of wild wild card pick for me feek and lungs slash lone sword another planet four bro um, <laughs> i'm so happy to have you as the other person because <laughs> like these are albums i like i want to put on but then i was like oh, i gotta put my you know i got like, yeah, yeah no i mean this we can't have the exact Ill. same list so yeah. i think this works out Fucking quite Ill. well um this, you know, like, go, yeah go off <laughs> lungs slash lone sword idiosyncratic like often stripped down and hypnotic production and then just like speak just flying over these beats lungs you know just going so fucking hard on some of the like just the attention to detail the precision the agility on this record this is some of my favorite rapping of yeah. the year yeah. um did you listen to planet x with um i with did no not, face i've not gone around to that's it. not on streaming but that like i was grappling with putting either this or that album on there mm. um planet x is a little shorter the where the tracks are longer right and there's not as many but yeah this you will see on our top 20 songs of the year for mm. me i'm not going to put any of the albums that are on my top 10. i okay. feel like catch the vibes go to those albums find those tracks i might put my number one song of the year on my top 20 songs just because it is so definitively number one but you will hear songs from this album on my top 20 songs of the year list when jed and i get to it early next year yeah um, this is amazing 
microphone. Number. Yo, your list is pretty fire. <laughs> like, I'll, I'd, yeah, I'd like to, I'll, I'd hope it wouldn't be fucking trash. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, like, like, we get to the end, maybe you'll just I like, wasn't, man, this list is fucking yeah. trash. No, I was like, you know, Kanye. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> viewing it as like, yeah, we in competition yeah, who what, comes what, up what, with what. a better list, but yeah, this is like, if I saw somebody with this list, I'd be like, bro, that, that fool's tapped in. Number three, Ice Cold Bishop, Generational Curse. Um... This is like probably the well. This is like the trappiest yeah. and most like West Coasty. West this Coast-y, is this is gangster rap, style gangster yeah. rap shit on my list. Um, but like, and, and you know this this intro of, of this track focused probably does highlight an issue that some of our listeners had with this is that it is definitely one of the first great albums we've seen that is influenced by like the ascent of Kendrick Lamar. Word. You know, there, there is um, to pimp a butterfly fingerprints all over yeah. this album. Uh, but if Kendrick could release this album, people would be calling it like an all-time classic right. and like the true successor to, to pimp a butterfly. Um, but Ice Cold Bishop just styles different. Yeah, I feel like, you know, his voice, the way he just, he's all over the place, the, the energy that he comes at the listener on like all of these tracks um, and just like the underlying tragedy of this record. You know, it, even though he's like styling, there's so much fun on this record. You know, this album's funky, it's enjoyable. Um, but like at the core of it is like a really poignant and, and tough message. This is a yeah. street level, like, you know, the the reality of, of just how difficult things can be, you know, under this specific sort of fat, uh, facet of the black American experience. It, it really um, speaks to me in a lot of ways too, because as I was growing up in California, like G-Funk, like real West Coasty sound, where I was at, I grew up in Oceanside, California and in Inglewood, California in the 90s. And this is what gang bangers, this is what the bangers sounded like, you know what I mean? Like this real West Coast draw, the hard ERs that we, like it speaks to me like mm. my nephew k rocket you know he jamming this shit too and and like uh on top of that it's just it's kind of brilliant beyond its years uh the government gave us guns government gave us guns uh bad influences from my, my uncles uncle. that yeah from my uncle like this album is really tremendous yeah and just this, yeah this was on the first three drafts of my top 10 list right yeah um I can't wait for whatever comes next. Hella Westy. Hella Westy. Now to take it from this incredibly West Coast album to this very East Coast album. <laughs> yeah. King Vision Ultra Shook World. I've never heard anything like this before. This is this is high art, but also the differentiation between high and low art is bullshit. And this yeah. album takes square aim at that. Mm. This is some street shit. This is some New York, like, hip hop in the purest sense mm. while being, like, avant-garde. Oh, it just destroys that mm. divide for me. There's nothing like this that came out this year. Um, there's nothing like there's, this like, that's come out. That's come out. Mm. Uh, Gang PTP, a.k.a. King Vision Ultra, just one of the most, like, uniquely incredible musicians out right now. Uh, not just musicians, artists. What he's doing, yeah. constant, like, disruption of the social order and mastery of the craft. Just his ability to, to flip and manipulate and change samples, the instrumentation provided by the band Algier. Yeah has been torn apart and reassembled in this new um, incredible configuration yeah. uh, and just everything he's doing at the moment. He recently uh, sold, like, he sold a bunch of uh, bootleg Aphex Twin t-shirts uh, and raised like a few hundred dollars, I believe, for, for Palestinian children's, like a Palestinian children's fund or something like that. Word. It was fucking ill. Yeah. Everything this man is doing is nah, ill. I, just I, feel a gold. Deep, I feel a deep camaraderie on him on, on a kind of ideological, philosophical um, level. Uh, like Yes. When this you, is when this you hear him talk about hip hop culture, he's talking like he gets towards a lot of the f feelings I have about it. Like a lot of people are like, yeah, f you know, 50 years of hip hop. And I'm more towards that Grand Master Flowers level that he and cats like Big Just kind of come up with in, in, a, in a deeper, more subcultural, actual like a political economy of hip hop that was occurring that is not necessarily breaking with electric boogaloo like the other elements of it and in gang and, and king vision ultra is just 
He's on the level. This album, I didn't put this on my list because I was certain Jet would have it. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I just, you know, I, I want to just... Yeah. But the the, the range of influences on here from, you know, uh, East Coast hip hop via Mike Patton, fucking Boris, fucking... Uh, you know, Ram LZ, Ram LZ, Death Comic uh, Crew, Death Comic yeah, Crew, like it's so Anticon, much, Anticon, like yeah. um, yeah. all kinds of just wonderful, unique, uh, divine styler shit. It's just very like, grime, yeah. like dub. You know, Lee Perry, yeah. like just a wonderful and an incredible project. You know, this is like a this is a Gazam Kunst book. This is you know an album that is so much broader than the sum of its parts. Yeah. I feel bad playing snippets of it yeah. because. This is such a complete and wonderful vision uh, of what music can be. The, the complete destruction of and yet a loving tribute to hip hop as a genre. Deconstruction and, and also just a, a beautiful, like, you know, temple. It is a temple to the brilliance, especially of New York and New York hip hop culture. Um, I've never heard anything like this before. If you haven't listened to it, like do yourself a favor and get on it. This is IR. This is like cinema. This is this is something else. Like this is something even even new. the even the uh, uh, I'm I'm struggling to remember the name. Like just like the the like interlude type of tracks that go into other things that are kind of like seem like throwaway. I'm like, no, that's my favorite track on the album. Like like so much of this album is um, it's what I always want to hear from artists. Not sonically, but definitely sonically. I want people to reject the tropes and stop trying to find themselves in other sounds and create just random avant-garde artistry because i think that that is the nature of what we're supposed to be doing with hip-hop like it's 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 not a hat it's not a certain hat but it is a certain hat you know it's like it's i don't know man this album is is uh objectively top three album of the year for me incredible whoa 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 i'm assuming our number ones are the same album mm. Um, yeah, definitely. So, shall we just go straight let's into save your that, list? Yeah, let's save that. Let's let's save that one we'll for save the that end. One for the um, end. For and the if end. the homie in the back, then tell him to hit me back. Yeah, yeah. Let me uh, let me let me uh, start with mine. All right. So, um, I cheated. I told hey. myself I wasn't going to cheat, and then I was having like a paralysis of options happen to me. Um, all of the there's two artists this year who I think have been working their asses off. Mm. MC wise, AJ Swade and Fatboy Sharif. And I just was like, man, the, the, the thing that put it over there is because I feel like Decay is like a magnum opus type of thing. Like yes. it's a really special piece of work. Um, and so I put I put Decay as my number 10, but Roper Williams, Planet Unfaithful with Fatboy Sharif. Roper Williams, YL, Akai Solo, Infinite Victory Lap is my 10 too. Like they're so distinct distinctly different but like this is like yeah i don't know what to tell people decay is amazing like i don't understand it i don't understand fat boy sharif all i know is that everything we talked about the planet unfaithful is also like a stunning record yeah. i i feel like maybe there's a bit of recency bias on my parks this album came out right at the beginning of yeah, the year yeah, yeah. that i was just like oh, i'll just shuffle it to the bottom of the list so i don't have three fat boy sharif yeah. joints on my on my top 10 list um, well that was kind of my thinking too but yeah. at the end of the day i was like i was kind of thinking of it at, like a, a long time ago i read uh, a frank zappa interview where he was talking about like the the project object mm. where it's like everything is the album like yes. all of the art comes from the same person it's not just this it's it's all of the back and it's all of the future and i was just like fat boy sharif fat boy sharif is just He's not everything that we just were talking about when it came to that shook shook world album. Yep. I feel that about Fat Boy Sharif, Absolutely. complete um, outlier, <laughs> outlier, yeah. complete outlier <laughs> in hip hop. Like styli stylistically, content wise, he's just a unique individual, and he comes from the left. He comes from this part of hip hop that most people be like, "What the fuck is this?" And I would tell those people, "What the fuck are you tapped into?" I, because I'm here for this. I'm DJing tonight, and I'm gonna be the first on after the New Year's countdown. 
and I do not I, play. I, <laughs> I, I really, really yeah. would like to ring in the new year, just like my family. <laughs> just, I mean, that's that's one way to just, go about just, it. Just start yeah. everyone on a bad note. Yeah, yeah that's one way to uh, go about with it. some absolutely incredible music. You are correct, though. I really yeah. should not do that. No, I mean, but I, I might. don't. I. I that's like a form of culture jam, and you might get somebody on that shit. But, Maybe. You know. Yeah, but um, number nine. Number nine is an easy choice for me. I thought a lot of people um, would know. It's kind of a new album, but I'm such a big Aesop rock fucking dork. Like, I just, I kept on finding this album, specific parts of this album to be much better than I even listened, that I even heard it for the first time. Like, mm. and also this album for me just... It it puts me it puts me in a b boy headspace more than any other hip hop that's come out this year mm. and and more than most artists. This just puts me in my present day. Welcome to the fuck it. I'm dope. Like there's no other hip hop album that came out this year that feels this like hip hop, hip -hop. but also like it, it is not your conventional hip-hop but it leans into a lot of the kind of lineage and history of things that i come from like all this shit is like b-boy stand shit the yes. shit that he be saying is b-boy shit to me like when i walk around and i'm really in my bag feeling good about myself a lot of it be like on some but it's also got that emotional depth and that conceptual yeah. ambition to it you know the broader like yeah. tech dystopianism crossed with the like the more street level like understanding of how these things affect us on a day-to-day -day basis it has like you know the the humorous element yeah. you know your aggressive steven like yeah. you're you're kind of like oh this is like fun but then you've got like deeply personal yeah. songs like black snow Vitus, black, that black just, snow like, move you on like a real like visceral black level. snow might be like a top 10 aesop rock song of all time like the more i listen to it there's like a depth there and this this album also puts me into an optimism about life that i've kind of been struggling with a little mm. bit like he starts it off with that old folk fucking refrain oh death oh death real hip-hop shit and i say real hip-hop jokingly but yeah this is some hip-hop shit Ill. and th that's just me ill i mean and the production is yeah. all fucking fire on here and it's well. all him too it's which kind of adds him. to it like oh <laughs> can you please hold a moment i am so in effect fighting in like I've made a parallel to to the song that it was about when we did the recording, but like it really is like I'm not ready to fucking be done. And I'm not saying I had the worst year or nothing like that, but those of you that are close to me and Jet that be on the channel, like shit ain't all fucking bells and whip. Like you know what I mean? It ain't all lovely. And uh, this is an album that really fucking made me be like, yeah, word, fuck y'all. We ready for this? Yeah. And uh, all right for my next one. This album grew on me like watching a giant wave form. Mm. My eyes just slowly widen until I realized like what was happening and the power of what was happening. This is uh, Obi Wan Kalnabo, um, produced by Dylan the Infamous. It was kind of my it was my first time really getting into both of them. And as we said on the 11th album of the year, to me, there's just something that is so tremendously interesting about Obi-Wan. The album is called Cal Nabo. It is about the second part of a trilogy of records, uh, beginning with Guanahani and ending with Apocalypso. Cal Nabo in the middle there. Sorry, please continue. No, you, you, exactly right. And and it is deeply anti-colonialist, anti-imperialist. It is, it is a, a dope historical message baked in about um, indigenous people of the the islands where he comes from and the people that he develops in but it also sounds like some real east coast like here goes some bars if you like rock marciano you might be here but instead of it being some real pimp ship bars you'll get some some historical facts you, and, and and some really dope perspectives just the same way you would expect and on top of that dylan the infamous sprinkles in all of these elements from that sound clash that that reggae that dub that rich tradition of caribbean musics all throughout the music i've never ever heard like if you Listen to those, like, we're used to, you know, the Griselda ad-libs yeah. and those type of, you know, talk to them, talk to them. This is but the things they, culture. But the this things is, they do yeah. on this, is, is, is it's incredible. And by the time I got to this song, Wave Start, I was like, I get it. 
I get it. I understand it. And and to me, this is like, you know, he, he sells his albums for what he feels that they're worth. Mm -hmm. And if I had a lot more money, I would purchase them for that because to me, this is this is high art. This is artistry. And on top of that, it comes from the fucking mud it comes from that original clay and there's nothing that sounds like this and it's also just like a wonderful you know so much of what we cover like comes from the center it is american hip-hop and yeah. every now and then we'll cover like you know the mary sue's from singapore mm -hmm. like we cover you know the swindle from the uk or even the lalapaloozas from tokyo uh you know it's from the center it's it's yeah of the you know so-called like developed world fucking um you know comes from this yeah. kind of singular perspective and then you have this album that comes from the periphery yeah. of it's so of the bahamas yeah. you know it is of nassau like it is of you know yeah. taino culture yeah. it is of this kind of yeah like you said it's yeah. of the clay it's yeah. the original man kind of thing um and yeah i mean just yeah. brilliant anti-colonial uh fucking culture yeah. jamming um it, 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 it feels interesting because there's like a there's a bit of there's a part of me that i'm i'm kind of like voyeuristically stepping into this mm. but it's also historical like i i'm not some ethnographer like oh what are the, what are these type of black people like like i feel like he's tapping me into another part of my community and people who have come from the same african diaspora and just a, in a way that is just not pronounced this song Wan canoe i mean like he got a song called slave god graveyard skyscraper prison like He's doing something incredible, and I'm looking forward to more of his art. Shout out to him. He sent us one of his albums that he charges $333 for. This is this is a person who is 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 not just trying to emulate sounds. They are shaping a new direction of sound, and I, I rock with that 100%. I wanted to give him some shine. This is one of my favorites of the year, and I also think... Listen to these stabs, bro. That shit is crazy. All right, next one. I, I, yeah. oh, okay, go, no, go, go I'll on. also just like highlight like my appreciation for like some of the indigenous kind of religious elements that come through on this record. Obi Wan comes from Obia, which is a Caribbean uh, practice in origin, similar to like voodoo, is you know also mm. of that kind of background. You also have stuff like Makumba from South America, I believe. Um, and uh, I had another one on the list, like uh, uh, Umbanda is like okay. another one that's practiced in Brazil. Uh, all these like incredible religious practices and all these things that I think have kind of been like uh, very sidelined in, in hip hop because Western spirituality is, you know, this dominant cultural right. hegemony. And even like a lot of the hip hop we review is like a deeply oh, yeah. Christian at its core. Mm -hmm. Or it's like a, 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 some permutation of like Abrahamic a, a, religions, Abrahamic yeah. religions uh, 5% like nation that, yeah. Islam type mm -hmm. stuff, which is something you will see in other records mm -hmm. that, that we're going to talk about today and that we've already spoken about. Um, yeah. But yeah, nothing quite yeah. like this. I, I said in the last video in the in the top eleven, yeah. I know some of you guys are like tech people who make a bajillion dollars a week. Like, go kick him three hundred dollars for for this. Yeah. Go kick him one hundred twenty dollars. You know, one hundred eleven, eleven, whatever. Yeah. Um, kick him some money. Yeah. Invest, invest yeah. in this incredible artist. Yeah. This shit ain't Afrocentric, bro. This shit is from the the clay right there. Yeah. So this one that that was a, that's an incredible joint to me. My next album is one that. You guys haven't heard me talk about on the show. We haven't reviewed. And it's just something really, really kind of on the periphery of, I think, culture. It's by Celestophone. It's called Paper Cut from Obit. Okay. And I wasn't familiar with Celestophone until this year, but the album features some of our favorites like Def C, Rap Ferrer, Arm & Hammer, More Mother, and the great MC Paul Barman. Um, this album is incredible. The production is is largely actual instrumentation. The uh, Celestophone comes from a music background, yeah. and it is innovative, funky, groovy, psychedelic. The rhyming is abstract, poetic, weird, catchy. It's an album album where every single track flows into the next in a very interesting way way it's something that like a frank zappa would be surprised with and this mm. is an album that pushed out the mary sue for me it pushed out beloved uh jazz paradise or beloved paradise, paradise yeah. jazz and it is like this is it but this is one of the more conventional joints on it right like I, I i'm not familiar with this record oh, you man you on, you man. will love it like yeah it it is it sounds like it's from a different time Oh, this is fucking dope. Oh, it's crazy, this album. I was surprised nobody knew about this shit. I was only introduced to it because 
on my DSP, if you follow an artist and they're featured on an album, a lot of times they'll show up in your weekly release. And shout out to Def C, incredible Def C. Thanks to him, I believe, and Rap Ferreira, it showed up on my shit. And I was like, hold on. It's like, this is not some fucking dude that should only have a thousand listeners a month. This is some of the most intricate, incredible, compelling work that I've heard ever. And it's like, you know what I mean? I mean like, this is like some Lee Rittenor shit. Like some, some yeah. Peep game, dude. Mm. It's so avant-garde and it's like... The the grooves on this that you you'll love it, Jet. Like, uh, yeah, no, uh, this is this is gonna have to be one I put on yeah. on the way home. This, like, I I mean, virtually all the songs here, right? Like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me go from. I'll I'll do a transition from the end of the song, right? It's super. It, it's like. It's very like a uh, uh, Chick Korea, Chick Korea, uh, yeah. you know, inner space era, like mm. some weird, like kind of futuristic funk some at times. Yeah, like listen to this transition, yeah. like. Paintings of panspermia. Do you guys know what panspermia is? Like, <laughs> it's incredible. Like I heard about that through like psychedelics, you know. Asteroids right. landing with mushroom spores and 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 creating the wildlife on another place. Like it's an incredible album. Uh, paper cut from Obit, mm. and the cover is dope. And I think Obit is like obituary. Okay, paper cut sense. from o yeah. It's it's a uh, oh, that's ill. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's, fucking, it's Ill. fucking dope. Um, highly recommend that one. Uh, the next album is a little bit more conventional, and I don't have anything super special to say about it um in terms of anything other than why i i love it Teravada it is by and zumo Teravada and zumo waste management it's a, like it's just kind of more towards a conventional hip-hop beat rapper bells and whistles but not like fucking super crazy bells and whistles like that it's just super solid and i found really myself going back to it so often um you know a lot of things that he he would say is just like Y'all be on some fucking war crimes. Fuck a Zionist. Like, yeah, we on that. <laughs> what? And, and, and when I heard, you know, when I heard Zumo's production during the, the review, it surprised me so much. And this has just probably been my most, like, listened to hip hop album that is more towards the conventional. This mm. and the Arc Flashington by AJ, AJ Swade. Yep. Um, and also Stacking Chips, Homeboy Sandman, Rich. Yep. Those are the albums in contention with this, but... I play the world's smallest violin. Yeah, he Terabata is just uh, he endeared himself more to me this year. I fuck with it heavy. Next one is uh, kind of this is where I be cheating again uh, because I I like to cheat and I was going to do for for most of the time I had I had uh, I had this you know I had I had scaring the hose on but the more the more I thought about it. I decided to go with the Danny Brown because Quaranta. I adjusted this right at, yeah, Quaranta. Qu Quaranta. Yeah. Um, I adjusted at the end, like, Scaring the Hose has about three songs that I love, but as a whole, this album just speaks to me. Mm. I think it's incredible dope artist of, a uh, portrait of an artist that is larger than the sum of its parts, and it speaks to an optimism that I hope to be carrying with me in the future. Like, I listen to Scaring the Hose, and I hear that Danny, and then I hear Danny on this, and, like, it, it's a short, cohesive project that I kind of didn't know how I felt for a long time. And my, my thoughts on it developed more as we had that conversation review about it. Yeah. But man, like, it's, it's so good. It's so good. It's different. But I, I like, a, as a, just like a single piece, like from an artist... And this is kind of like, uh, kind of, uh, I don't know, dark. But the Ryuichi Sakamoto 12 album, hey, some reason. Look it, forward to my uh, top 10 non hip hop too, albums of the year. Me too. Hey. But like that album and this album feel the same for me. But mm. in the way that uh, Ryuichi Sakamoto of uh, Yellow Magic Orchestra, the way that he, he's gone, he's passed, and that music will live on and what it kind of represents, this, all, this speaks to like a rebirth for me of Danny. Mm. And I kind of like it for that reason. I love this album. Uh, I, I'm a big Danny Brown fan. Boom. Next what? joint. We didn't review this. Okay. 
Earl Sweatshirt, The Alchemist, Vor Dyer. Voir dire. Voir dire. What, yes. I, so we didn't review it for whatever reason. Um, it's because it was like attached to like an NFT purchase or some shit at the beginning, right? Yeah. Um, there was a big there's a big reason that I didn't get to it. And then when I did get to it, like I the a version of the album I heard was different than the one that is ended up on streaming. There's like a different song or some shit like that. But Earl didn't reach me with sick. You know, I like sick a lot, but right. at the end of the day, there was just like not a lot of tracks that I went back to on that. This one, he catches me with everything. I, I view Earl as is like I've talked about the black radical tradition and where he comes from and the poetry and the where his arts come from. This feels deeply personal to me, but it also feels like styling. And I feel like Earl is like the quintessential nigga that's outside in the mix and with the cats but also like the deep thinker that is the introvert and the person that's weird and i know he's humorous and crazy but the the shit that he be saying to me is just it sticks to me like a lot of strong poetry and i can't say that about my favorite i don't say that about woods some some woods verses do but sometimes earl will just say some shit and i'm like damn like that is like the way he hold on like this right here Spread like Jiffy and make perfect sense. You try and get a bite. I snicker. I caught a whiff of sidewind, the slithering in the vine. And listen, it's hissing like spinning vinyl. This cylindrical system of life. Vicious cycles. Mice give up when it's dead. Bro, he says, I caught a whiff of sidewinder slithering in the vine and listen. His hissing spinning like vinyl. This cylindrical system of life. Vicious cycles. Mice give up when it's dinner time. Bro, he, he like the beats on this are great. It's some of my favorite Alchemist work, recent Alchemist work. And he had the album with Larry June. Alchemist is always so busy, but something about this album, man. Like when I listen to Earl, I, I promise you, it's like I feel like I'm listening to like a Mary Baraka or like a Langston Hughes. Like for me, it's deeply poetic. And it's the way his cadences and the way he stacks words. It's so hip hop and also so elevated above that and super black for me. It just connects with me, bro. I don't know what to tell other people about it next one billy woods maps there we go we know that we 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 know how how we both feel about maps i chose it for essentially the same reasons as jet um it's just fucking like listen, you know i'll be on my jazz shit this is everything on this album is so dope it's um, it's been really interesting to also watch how woods has kind of reinvented himself across the last few albums the way that maps differs so much from church which differs so much from ethiopes and yet are all very clearly of the same tradition and of the same kind of pool um ethiopes feels like a magnum opus like you know over you know in the way that it's kind of aged over the years the ways we've thought about it um and church on the other hand uh, not to describe it as disposable or anything but it's more immediate it's a more mm. kind of you know like bangs in places it's yeah. it's a little more straightforward and this album also has this kind of lightness to it there's like a joyfulness to it you know the happiest africans as, as, yeah. as billy woods would put it um but also yeah the jazziness and just the the combination of sounds the way that um kenny siegel is able to like collage these together sonically um mm. is is just another step in this incredible um, legacy yeah. of music the the Billy Woods is crafting. I, I I think maybe we need to have a conversation about like our three favorite MCs or three hardest working MCs of the year. And uh, spoiler alert, it's Billy Woods is on there too. And I kind of feel like there's something to say about where his career is at now and what he's done over the last ten years. But maybe we'll get into that in another video earlier in the, in the new year. But yeah, I mean, who who is against this? This is one of the best albums of the year. And if you don't understand that, then you must not have caught it. Um, my next joint, pretty easy to. Uh, I, well, I don't know. Maybe people were not expecting this, but it's another Kenny Siegel album. Hey, Kenny Siegel and Pink Navel, How to Capture Playful. It's just a wonderful album to me that I kept playing more and more. Um, it's 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 whimsical. It's fun. It's dope. It's insightful philosophically. It's it's just silly um, at times. And the only reason this doesn't take my top number one spot is because there's like songs on here that i don't care for and the, the first album of my year is like perfect and this one man like i don't know it pushed off like halo boy uh um black beach boy it pushed off all the boys and and um yeah this is just 
really, really good and fun and the highest level of production, the highest level of cadences, flows, and rhyming that you can possibly find is miles above and um, an outlier. It's just a fucking very musically, sonically interesting album with fun just and like whimsical and like weird and uh, this track bang yeah. so fucking hot i mean you've been playing this song yeah. you, I've, th this song is present vendor has come on yeah. like at least once like every time you come, come to the crib yeah, to yeah. To record. yeah um yeah the the chorus on this is just like yeah it's it's very gamey it's 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 fun i like it man it's exuberant i'm trying to go into next year feeling a little bit happier and different so this this type of music was speaking to me a lot this year it's not just for video game fans it's for everybody who's dope it's like there's something interesting to say about all of these things there and um i guess for our number ones then dj l spade dreams in the mud ep oh wait no that that that's not it <laughs> that, no uh, go off yeah <laughs> that's it yeah yeah dj l spade dreams no okay no for for the first album uh, our number one both of our number ones of the year initially when we decided to make our list we were trying to come up with caveats that prevented us from feeling as though we were somehow um biased Journalistic integrity yeah yeah and full disclosure type so we're shit. gonna remove if you submit an album to us that we review we're gonna remove fat boy sharif we're gonna remove you know uh, cal nabo we're gonna re we were also gonna re re remove albums that we knew other people would love like we scaring the hoes because you guys know hose, yeah. that and at the end of the day we're like yo we can do anything we want and that's just what it's gonna be and so our album of the year and we didn't plan this this nope. was not collaborative or anything like that is sundial by no name by no name she's one of our biggest supporters she's been rocking with us for the last year she contributes to our patreon and we are deeply deeply humbled like, humbled and honored by that because who she is as an artist and to me what she represents in the wider mass culture um this album to me is so incredible with not just you want to play something off of it you want to oh, i'm sorry i'm fucking up because I'm, I'm i'm like damn you know, <laughs> i feel like, like i'm geeking out yeah. myself yeah um yeah i i i just it was so controversial this album amongst so many dummies bro like uh. It was so controversial against like uh, a lot of the, the 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 white liberals, the black wokies. Um, they were trying to figure out black capitalist, war, Twitter, war yeah, type black people, capitalist black anti Zionism, anti -Zionism. Mm. and 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 they were trying to figure out like I, who is she dissing? And what was frustrating to me about that is that a lot of the the journalistic approach to a lot of the reviews they were extremely biased by this like really neoliberal sect of people who were trying to virtually uh walk this line of righteousness without actually interrogating or inspecting the position she has this album outside of it just from sounding amazing i think you'll be hard pressed to find any album that has a message like this and especially one that has a message like this that meets mass culture yes, in the way that she absolutely. does she is above the underground she is a you know right there in npr artist a, a, a coachella headlining artist. she's she is distant from where the other people who might talk about this shit are you know back in the day 10 years ago 20 years ago i was looking for artists to kind of break a lot of these certain ideological constructs because i've been left for a whole whole minute oh yeah i was looking for a lot of these artists to break certain ideological constructs the homophobia the the uh black capitalism a lot of these the misogyny, things the like, yeah. you know and and you 10 years ago we've got woods with robert mugabe on the cover yeah. great woods is very much left what is his political tendency does he come out and say you know what we need socialism it's not that he has anything that like he needs to do that but it's in the music but even if it was it doesn't reach the amount of people this does she so distinctly diagnoses and points at these issues and nobody was really getting at that shit on these reviews i've never ever ever heard anything in the history of hip-hop that gets towards accessibility and message like this you go back to your public enemies and it's not even no, like that no. kendrick lamar diagnoses certain things about your the same issues I have with the identitarian intersection with uh, neoliberalism. No name is 
off that. Off that. It's amazing what this album has accomplished, and it makes me optimistic. And that's even before I get to why the music it sounds, sounds good. Sounds so damn good. And the music sounds so fucking good. Just sonically, like it's beautiful to listen to from like the the quality of the production how clean everything sounds yeah. all of the little vocal harmonies that you see on this record chord progressions that sound really amazing bright you know wide variety of uh different styles and approaches on this record from like funky um you know uh, traditional kind Afro-futuristic of futuristic styles, sounds, styles like, uh, like your your gospel as neo soul church rejoiceful um, negro spiritual like type of level shit bossa nova type shit like um and just like the verses the rapping the agility on here no name's voice the smoothness with which it's delivered um this is a this is a revelatory album and the fact that like so many people get bogged down in like culture war bullshit over it i I, I don't even want to get in that because you know i like i kind of want to talk shit about it a little bit because you know what i like i want to be positive i just want like this album brought me so much fucking positivity and joy the the variety of black voices that she had like allowed to be on a, a, a work like this and knowing how heavily scrutinized she would be the courage that it kind of takes to point at these things because she even though on the track very clearly she she doesn't bail herself out she makes it clear that i'm not saying that they're fucking up i'm saying what what is happening here and how i fall into the same contradictions but then she gets in an interview and they're like why don't you like jay-z and that type of you know cultural analysis is where i think we fall short it is so tremendously important the messages she has on this shit even me i was in my bad bitch bag listening to this shit i don't (laughs) need no man i got a little bit you know what i mean and a couple of friends like the beauty uh you know beauty supply supply. stuck in my head and that's not even i you know i send that to my sister you know my sister and my niece their entire lives they've been flat ironing their hair they've been trying to make it look certain ways they've been putting blue and trying to do baby hair shit and it's like yo her voice is just she is 10 years at least ahead of this movement i have i don't want to say faith because you know i don't rock like that Mm. but i have an optimism that more people are catching on to this yes and we're moving towards this type of shift in black politics that will be more precise like this and and have these messages it this album is is unlike anything I don't know what like so much of the music we do is unlike anything but not not all the music that we 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 review even does anything like this like the no. bars the I could go on for days. Like I, after we reviewed the review, I was like, "Yo, I could have talked about that for another 30, 45 Happily. minutes." Happily, I miss saying so many things in in that review. You know, we we like, I I felt I just got so frustrated. Let me let me let me round this out, right, Jet? Okay. Yeah. I yeah. found myself being so frustrated with the reception of this album. I I, I wondered how she was doing about it, you know. Mm. And of course, she's strong. She's you know she's she's incredible. She can handle her own shit. But there, I wanted to come to her defense about a lot of these things, especially the J Electronica shit, especially about a lot of things. Like you go through her comments, and there was like a picture of her in a strip club with some stacks of money, and you get the the whole like, oh, I thought you were a socialist now you like money and it's just like the weak political positions people have there's no analysis but, there's no yeah. there's no dialectic there it's just like point scoring I, political I, like I, oh I, I'm, I'm me, this, like, me trying to explain the nuance of black anti-zionism to these people is like me trying to explain the nuance of me being like fucking white people meanwhile my white homies over here we're not talking about you we're talking about they and to try to explain where the nation of islam's black capital anti-zionist message comes from and and differentiate that from straight up like nazis Mm. was such a thing that i didn't want to have to do but i know that they don't know black people enough to understand that that kind of line ain't one that we care to even nuance a lot of those people don't want to know and they don't and they never will it's like a great black woman 
with right. me. Right. Like, because none of these people were even going after Jay Electronica. I wonder how well that like, they're trying to navigate this anti-Zionist line now that a lot of the liberal left is like, oh my God, what are they doing in Palestine? I just heard about this. Like, yeah, we've been off that. Been off that. But one of, let, what I wanted to get to is not to highlight all the bullshit that came with this album. I wanted to highlight the positive thing that it did for me. It reminded mm. me that the courage that it takes to put this message out, knowing that your family, your friends, your peers, people that you thought were going to be on your side are, are, are not necessarily going to have your back on that. But the courage it takes to have and maintain that message. And then it also reminded me that I don't need to. If I care so much about all the fuck shit that's going on in the Internet, in the larger public discourse, I am distracted from the things that I really need to be concerned about. I this year I deleted over 800 subscriptions on my YouTube on my YouTube uh, account. I, I, I got rid of a lot of the podcasts and a lot of the things of people just talking about shit because it's not all that serious. I'm, I need to be more focused. I need to leave behind mass culture's interpretation of things while still trying to court mass culture towards a liberatory politics. And I have I have a um, a Eugene Debs quote that that i'm reminded of when i think of this album Close this up. politics and social action reside in the effort to bring such superficially appealing abstractions down to earth and translate their meaning into concrete circumstances and to set them against the shifting constraints of historical necessity secret house thanks for watching Happy New Year to everybody. Have a great 2024 and we're going to have plenty more content on the way.